Howdy folks, it's Corey of Nuts and Zolts, continuing our wide bus wireless redstone exploration. Last week I explored in great detail four examples of skulk sensors used in parallel to convey information over distance. None of them very efficient. Today we'll be exploring more efficient and thus perhaps more practical examples Regardless of the practical application, this will cover some useful compact digital and analog logic circuits, which will help open up your designs to endless applications. If you haven't, please check out the first video. Before we continue with new concepts, a quick recap. In front of us are two skulks on adjacent blocks. The purple areas represent where both skulk sensors can detect movement. The pink and blue areas are where only the corresponding left and right skulks detect movement. We take advantage of this to isolate individual lines of our parallel buses. In this new example, we will be using a 4-bit bus to transmit 11 combinations. This bus could be used to transmit up to 16 combinations. Unfortunately, to reduce some complexity of the design, I used one combination of four bits to reset the circuit between commands, so I could not make a 16 character display for hexadecimal. That will come in a later video. To select a number, I am using an item frame. The numbers do not have to be selected in order, but I didn't want to confuse the design with redstone circuits to first generate the signal. As you probably know, the item frame produces a redstone signal strength between 1 and 8. We can think of this as an analog signal. To transmit this strength over skulks, we must first convert this analog information into digital information. To do this, we must use an analog to digital converter or an ADC. From this view, things can be a little disorienting. There's a whole lot going on, I'm not gonna lie. Let's first discuss the items which do not contain the ADC. The redstone in blue composes the components for constructing the final command, and the redstone in lime green composes the components for triggering the transmit event. These functions combined allow us to send all bits simultaneously, which is important for reconstructing the information on the receiving end. The circuits in the brown, green, and cyan concrete are all the same circuit. We repeat these circuits so that we can destruct the signal strength into four bits. Just like decimal numbers, binary numbers have places. In decimal, we have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and so on. So the number 100 is constructed as 100. Zero, zero. In binary, we have a ones place, a twos place, a fours place, an eights place, and so on. Each number a doubling of the previous. Here's a closer look at the individual place circuit. This circuit allows us to represent the ones and twos place. The purple section is the part of the circuit which compares the original signal strength to our desired threshold, in this case two. If the original signal is less than the threshold, we do nothing and pass the original value along. If the original signal is stronger than the threshold, we light the bit and then subtract the value from the original signal. The green area is where we subtract our threshold from the original signal. We do this because if we don't, 8 is of course larger than 4, and 2, and 1, so all those bits would be turned on. You can see that we're using many comparators in subtract mode. We also have hoppers. The hoppers allow us to represent a number we need to subtract from the signal. In the purple segment, we want to subtract 2 from the signal, so we have 22 items in the hopper. In the green section, we are working with 13, and we want to reduce it to 1. So in the green hopper, we have 229 items. Let's give it a try. 
Our signal strength is currently zero, so neither the ones or the twos place is lit. When we turn the frame to one, we see that the twos place threshold is not met. So the signal continues to light up the ones place lamp. When we turn the frame to two, the twos place threshold is met. So the twos place lamp turns on and the circuit to subtract two from the original signal also turns on. Because we subtracted two from two, there is no remainder left to light up the ones place. When we turn the frame to three, the twos place threshold is met, but after we subtract two from the original signal, one remains. So the ones place lights up. If we go beyond three, because we have no circuit to subtract longer numbers, both lights remain on. We need more bits. Now that we understand how the circuit works, let's try it out with more bits. With the number two selected, the eights place isn't lit, neither is the fours place. The twos place is lit, and the ones is not. With three selected, both the eights place and the fours place remain off, but now the two and the one are both on. Because we're using the item frame, this demo goes up to 8, but I have a cheater switch over here just to raise it to higher values. Now that we have deconstructed the analog values into binary values, we need to assemble those binary values into an analog signal strength. To do that, we have a digital to analog converter or a DAC, represented by this bit of circuitry here. And man, is it an ugly mess. So let's break it down. Here we have our DAC. These four switches represent our binary digits. Pink is the ones, orange is the two, purple the four, and green the eight. Spread out over here is a repeat of four simple circuits. Each of these four circuits subtract the value of the original bits from the signal strength of this torch, which is 15. So if all the bits are turned off, our analog value is 15. This may seem a little backwards, and it is, but this is because comparators are best at subtraction. For the purpose of the seven segment display, since we only need to have a unique position for each character we display, it doesn't matter if we're counting up or down. Whenever we activate one of these circuits, we subtract the value of the hopper from the original signal. By combining an ADC and a DAC, we can easily move an analog signal across great distances, whether we are using skulk sensors or not. I hope this has been fun and informative. Thank you for watching. This has been Corey of Nuts and Zolts. We look forward to sharing art, technology, and pastimes with you again soon.